frequent flyers of Reddit. What are your airport life hacks? I have a few tips to offer for the no business traveler that have served me well. Book direct with the airline you want to fly. Research your destination on however many travel websites you like and record the flight details. Then go find that same flight on whateverairline.com. The price will almost always be close to the discounter and you're not bound by the discounter's policies because they own your ticket. Trust me it's worth the few dollar sign to be able to extend a stay or get home an inch without any grief. I learned the hard way. Stick with an airline you like that has a major hub near your departure city and get the damn credit card. Oh you'll get free checked bags, club passes, priority boarding and usually a $99 companion flight. These airlines have partners that get get you to the most remote reaches. Loyalty has its perks. Travel as an individual. For example, whenever I fly with friends, family or for business, I just tell them, I'll see you there, I book my flights earlier than needed and leave a fluff, no commitment, day at the end. As a single flyer, you are more apt to get bumped, which I do voluntarily, which results in vouchers, upgrades etc. Using this method, I have not paid for a single vacation flight since 2009 nor have I used any rewards flights, miles, this includes round trips to Alaska and Hawaii 4 trips, from the east coast and 2 flights to the Caribbean. More often than not, the delays I have encountered only added a few hours to my trips and rarely inconvenience anyone. I even got to see San Francisco on their dime hotel and food voucher, as well and was able to scam the hotel points for me and another guy who gave up his seat. Research, deals, dates, rewards and super savers for the trips you want. Do the math before you book. In the distant past I weighed buying flights against the miles earned used when flying. Example, round trip flight to Hawaii might cost $1000 to $1600 or cost 80,000 miles. A super saver on their website might only be 40,000 if you move your travel a day or two in one direction or the other. Flexibility helps. Example 2. Round trip to Thailand is sometimes only $400, $700. I've seen them and will generate 20,000 plus air miles which is yet another free flight. Sometimes paying for the flight in dollars is better than using miles points for what it generates. Again, using the credit card gets your mileage credit segments, insurance, bags and so on. Seriously. Join. The. Lounge. Either annually, if you fly frequently, or buy a single day pass, check your credit card. You may already have membership. Lounges have open bars, yay, better Wi-Fi, and decent seats and toilets. But the best advantage, by far, is that airlines keep their ninja customer service people in the lounge. These are the folks that can you the last seat on the last flight, even if it's in a higher class. These are the folks who can get you a hotel for the night and a voucher for a decent meal. My wife always questioned my lounge membership saying that we could have used those miles for travel. Then we took a trip to California and everything went wrong. To the lounge and everything was just fixed. <coughs> Pilot here, so that kinda counts. Here's some insider tips. This website lists the airport and airline lounge Wi-Fi passwords for most airports around the world. Enjoy the free Wi-Fi. There are two kinds of bags. Those that get destroyed in cargo bins, and those that destroy other bags in cargo bins. Get the second kind of bag. Buy an aluminum frame luggage work stealth bag, or a travel pro. It's what all crew members use for a reason. The flight attendants have heard every single attempt from passengers to lie and cajole their way into first class. If you want better treatment and maybe an upgrade, bring a box full of truffles or chocolates. Treat them like people, and be very nice to them. If there is any opening in a nicer seat, they just might hook it up. If you do get an upgrade, don't boast about it to anyone, you could get the crew in trouble and they'll never do that again. If you are traveling internationally, sign up for global entry. Tea takes about an hour to fill out all the forms and you schedule a brief interview with a TSA representative who makes sure you aren't a crazy terrorist. 
but after that you essentially get to skip all the customs lines after returning to the US from an international trip. Trust me, it's worth it. Use TSA pre-check when traveling domestically as well. Take a picture of where you park so that when you return from a long trip, you remember. The employee parking lot at LAX is huge and I hate wandering around looking for my car. Do a little bit of homework and research the layout of the airports you'll be flying into, especially regarding what airline fly out of what terminals. Do this before you book tickets so you can be sure you make connecting flights. I'm LAX based, and the entire airport is divided into separate terminals. If you arrive on Frontier and need to make a connecting flight on Delta, you have to exit security. Then budget about 45 minutes, if you're fast, to either walk or take a bus from the Frontier terminal to the Delta terminal, go through security again, and walk to your gate. It's amazing how many passengers flying through LAX leave 30 minutes to make a connection when they'll have to change terminals, which essentially guarantees you'll miss your flight. Just a little planning ahead will prevent things like this from happening. Bit of a morbid one but like they teach us in flight training. Dress to egress. Wear non-synthetic clothing and closed toe shoes, not flip-flops Birkenstock CTC. In the highly unlikely event of an accident. Over 70% of all crashes are survivable, by the way. Pay attention to the safety briefing or an evacuation, you want close toed shoes so you don't subject your feet to jet fuel hydraulic fluid debris whatever else happens to be in the immediate vicinity of the aircraft. Non-synthetic clothing will just plain burn when subjected to heat, whereas synthetic material will melt to your skin. Not exactly something you want to think about when going on a trip, but it's good to plan for the worst case scenario. Consider leaving one ear open when wearing headphones at the airport, or turning down the volume considerably. People have missed their flights because they had their music turned up too high to hear the boarding announcements. Bring a modium with you in case of an emergency. Seriously. This isn't as much of a hack as it is common sense, but be a courteous passenger, if you have the window seat. You get a nice view and a wall to lean your head up against. Leave the shade open for takeoff and landing, but other than that keep it closed so people can sleep. If you're in the aisle seat, you get a little extra space for your outside leg and arm, and easy lavatory access. The guy in the middle seat gets both arm rests because middle seats fucking suck. If you lose or forget your phone charger, go to the airport lost and found. If they have any extras lying around, they'll just give them to you if they've been there long enough, usually 90 days. Make sure to pet the plane right before you get on and tell it that it is a good plane. I do that every time and the plane never crashes. Can confirm, I do that when I fly in planes and when I fly planes. Still here. If you fly a lot, get a rewards credit card with that airline. After flying frequently for work for a couple years, I now have platinum memberships with different airlines. Which means I get free checked bags, priority boarding, access to the lounge in airports that has free food and booze, and best of all free upgrades to first class if there are open seats, not to mention all the free flights I've gotten from racking up points on the card. My company reimburses my flights, so I charge them to the card but get to keep all the points for personal use. After traveling to the same cities multiple times, I make sure to know what each airport has to offer in case I have extra time there. For instance, Portland has a great little free theater with local short films. Many airports have massage places. Midway has a free use yoga studio. Sitting around being bored is for suckers. Screenshot your boarding pass and keep your id in your front pocket makes security as simple as possible. Everything goes in your bag before you even get in line. Wallet, keys, belt, shoes. Turn the brightness on your phone all the way up when presenting your boarding pass in security lines or when you board the plane. Lock the orientation on your phone, with the QR code open, 
and place your phone about a foot above the scanner. Push the phone down onto the glass scanner, and then raise it back up. This is the best way to scan that QR code, those scanners can be finicky. I keep a gallon sized Ziploc bag in the outside pocket of my suitcase. Just before I get in the security line, I empty my pockets of everything and put it into the bag along with jewelry. Then the Ziploc goes back into the suitcase. It doesn't matter how much time you think you have before your flight, find your gate first, and confirm it is the right one for your flight. Then, set in an alarm on your phone to give you plenty of time to get back in time to board. Missing your flight because you don't realize how far away your gate is will be a mistake you only make once, but better to not make at all. My go-to process is find the gate first. Then find the nearest bar. Drink a few beers and by the time boarding hits I'm a bit tipsy and go right to sleep. Same. My co-pilot gives me a bit of a look though. If it takes more than 20 minutes for you to get your bag when you fly with Delta you can get 2500 sky miles by putting in a request here.